Hello and welcome to the Haunted Manor. Today we are going to embark on the greatest of all Halloween traditions, carving jack-o'-lanterns. That's right. Get ready to get messy because we're going to roll up our sleeves and grab a fistful of pumpkin guts. I'm going to give you the tips and tricks for how to do this well and in a hurry if necessary. Stay with me. Hi, and thanks for taking a moment to watch this video. What I'll do for starters here is just walk you through a pumpkin carving kit that I've cobbled together over time. You can just get yourself a cheap little tackle box and throw a bunch of uh, pieces into it. I think most of the items that I have came from Pumpkin Masters. Uh, you've got scrapers, there's a scoop, a couple of uh, drills and punch wheels. These are nifty little tools for allowing the kids to participate in carving their own pumpkins with relative safety. They're not going to hurt themselves too badly with any of this stuff, especially if you're keeping an eye on them. But invest uh, in getting something like this, and uh, it'll serve you well over the years. So yeah, that's my kit. Of course, my uh, favorite tool of choice is just a basic metal spoon. Everybody has this in their house, and it does a great job of scooping out the insides. You're also going to want a couple of knives. There's one with a serrated edge. Sometimes you need something a little bigger. This will do a good job of taking the lid off, carving out the eyes, nose, and mouth, or pretending to be Michael Myers. So with that, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how some people carve their pumpkins. You're going to either take the top off or the bottom off. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate both, starting with the bottom reason some people start with the bottom is it gives it more of a flat surface. If they're putting it on the front step of their house or something, uh, it'll sit flat that way and you can put a little saucer or plate underneath it uh, to then light a candle. You won't get the wax dripping everywhere. Now, the big thing is to make sure that you're scooping out the inside properly. Get it nice and clean. You don't want any of those fibers hanging on there that could catch fire. So do a good job of taking out all the insides and uh, hopefully by the time you're done, it should look something like this. Yeah, I think I did an okay job in there. Did a quick job, but that's that's rough, roughly what it should look like. And here's uh, pumpkin seeds if you've never seen them. Hold on to those, wash them up good. You can toast those later. That's a good treat this time of year. Now I'm going to start cutting out uh, those features on the face, uh, cleaning up the eye there. If you make a mistake, like I'm showing here, well, you just cut off the eye. Don't worry about it. If your kid did that, reassure him that there's a way to fix it. Just take a toothpick. You can pop it back in there. If the toothpick's too long, just break it in half. And uh, with a little gentle encouragement, yeah, you can get that back in there and looking good as new in no time. See? So there's no need for crocodile tears. Looks just fine. Uh, pumpkins are pretty forgiving, so... Just remember that. Here I am cutting out a mouth. You might do the same thing with, you know, a tooth. <laughs> it's easy to cut one of those off. So if for some reason you did or it's just hanging by a thread, well, you can, you can start with plan B. You can just cut off a whole row of teeth. Maybe you're not even happy with how it looks. That's fine. Like I said, they're forgiving. You can just take a section of uh, what you've cut out before and uh, have some fun with it. And here I am taking a piece of that pumpkin flesh and I'm going to turn it into some fangs. There you go. And you don't just have to use pumpkin for that. You can use all kinds of different vegetables. Potatoes work great. A sweet potato. I've heard of people using turnips and all kinds of other things. Um, so there you go. You give it a mouthful of teeth and you didn't have to do all the carving. Uh, another <laughs> fun option is just make it look like it's puking. It's a good way to reuse <laughs> those pumpkin innards. Um, so, you know, be be creative. And also, uh, well, there's an example of, you know, you made a mistake, a pretty big one. You cut off a whole section of your pumpkin. Now you really got the crocodile tears flowing from your kid. I'll pull out the trusty toothpicks again and show that uh, there's a way to save that too. 
Okay, yeah, it's holding just fine. Might need to stick it in a few places uh, to make sure that it's uh, going to hold fast, but, you know, there's nothing to worry about here. Nothing to worry about at all. That's the best part about these toothpicks. Alright, so here's another tip you're going to uh, want to use if uh, lighting candles in your jack-o'-lantern. Just go with some cinnamon or even nutmeg. It'll give it a, almost a pumpkin pie sort of a scent when you light it up. That's, that's fun if you've never tried it before. Try it out. Here I am cutting up the face just a little bit more and while that's happening I wanted to tell you that you can use petroleum jelly in order to seal up some of those cut marks, keep it from rotting uh, and, and molding. That's another thing. So you usually don't want to start carving a pumpkin until a few days before Halloween. If you're more than a week out, you might start to see some of that mold and rot happening. So petroleum jelly will be a good friend for you. Here I am demonstrating taking uh, just the flesh off of some of those features. Make them stand out a little bit more. You can brighten them up. Sometimes the light shining from behind them will help them glow a little better too, depending on how thick they are. But uh, yeah, you can help them stand out that way. And uh, another good thing to do with some of those cut marks is you can use food coloring. Now, you don't want to dilute this, by the way, so I'm just going to put a few drops in that bowl there. But uh, with a small brush, you can paint that on to features like the, the teeth, make it look like he's... Uh, bloody or you know if he's got fangs not just the one fang like mine but you know a couple fangs <laughs> um, make it look like a vampire um, so you know if if your kid's not happy with their jack-o'-lantern this, this is another good way to change the whole look and feel of it help help them have a little bit more fun so I hope those tips were helpful now what I'm gonna demonstrate is just uh, what a more traditional approach to a jack-o'-lantern would look like if you're interested for historical context. You'll find this type of pumpkin uh, uh, on all kinds of advertisements going back through history. It's just uh, a few triangles on the face and a jagged sawtooth mouth. It doesn't get more basic than that. Again, make sure that you're scooping out the inside real well so that you don't cause a fire if you're using an open flame. Um, and then uh, another quick tip about the top is make sure you're cutting at a 45 degree angle when you're going around in that circle across the top so that the lid doesn't fall in on itself. So yeah, this is pretty much what a, a more traditional pumpkin face would look like if you're interested. And you can put a few different light options in there. Here I just tried an LED and it's all set for the big night. So happy Halloween. I hope that this was helpful. I hope you have fun and Stay safe and happy haunting.